If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and comment. Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel in another cutting video. Today, I'm gonna to be cutting out with you the Duplicity Handbag by Sew Yours. Now, I already do have a tutorial on this on the channel, but the time that I made that cut or that tutorial, I wasn't doing cutting videos. So we are currently doing the Duplicity Bag for the Thursday, July 2023 Sew Along classes. So if you need a slowed down version of making this bag you can definitely catch that on the membership site on the thursday tier um so yeah i just figured i would make this video cutting out the class bag and um yeah then we have that on the channel now i do want to remind you that i am doing this live from my um, basement studio when I'm doing it live, I do not have control of sounds that are going on in the background. I mean, my house is by no means soundproof. So you may hear the washing machine. You may hear Coco and Dexter, my dogs, barking. You may hear my kids upstairs. You may hear traffic as I'm on a busy bus route. And I'm only a few blocks away from the airport. So guaranteed, you will hear the odd jet going overhead. So thank you so much for understanding that. I, again, I don't have much control over that. So please do be kind in your comments and you can always mute it if you don't like those sounds and just watch the video if needed anyways what will I be making this bag out of um I don't have a picture to show you but I do have a meet the bags video um already up so I will make sure I link that down below so you can see that and get a tour of the bag as well as I will have a link to the designer's uh, website where she has a ton of uh, tester photos that can definitely help spark inspiration in you when you make your duplicity so this bag is actually a client order so it worked out really good so what my client chose was she wanted it to be all in black faux leather on the exterior so i'm going to be using um the connect uh vinyl by Cap from galaxy custom in loon black i have my roll here and i have a bunch of scraps that i'm also going to try to use up all my pockets i'm going to be lining with just a plain black uh quilting cotton mainly because i'm going through some scraps of the main lining and i don't think i'm going to have enough to do the pockets uh with the lining as there's maybe only a half a yard here i think i'm going to have just enough to cut the lining panels and that is all so um i obviously once upon a time cut the salvage uh, with the name of this off I bought this years ago it was in my scrap pile but she wanted hot pink with black flowers and I'm like hey I think I have that in my scrap bin so we will use that so I can tell you I probably bought this at Fabricland but I cannot tell you what it is called so I apologize for that so this is going to be my lining um, for the lining top pieces I'm going to be doing those all in faux leather as well and the reason I do that is this has recessed zippers so I want the tops of the bag to be fluid so it'll be like black vinyl all the way throughout and then below the zippers will be the lining fabric you can definitely have the contrasting lining on the other side you can place this any way you like you can make this bag in vinyls you can make it in cottons you can make it in canvases really you can do anything you like um, interfacing all of my cotton pieces I will be backing with EB fuse medium I do not or EB fuse light which is an Emmeline bags product is similar to SF 101 so any medium will be interfacing and for my exterior um, pieces I am going to be backing them with EB fuse heavy which is a it's similar to deck of the light which the pattern calls for um, but it's woven and it sticks so much better i swear um so that again is an emmeline bags product so again eb fuse light for my cotton eb fuse heavy for my exteriors for the exteriors you could also use fleece if you wanted if you're worried about it being too thick um i'm pretty sure bouncy firm would work if you have some of that you could definitely do that uh, it is not recommended to use uh, foam in this bag. Uh, it is a drop-in lining, so we're going to want to keep... It's actually two drop-in linings, and don't be scared of that. It's an easy drop-in lining. It's a great, great beginner drop-in lining, and then you get to practice it twice. Um, but yeah, it's going to be very important to keep the uh, interfacing outside of those seam allowances, So, and you don't want it to be too, too thick. So again, I will be using EB Fuse Heavy for the exterior, EB Fuse Light for my linings, and I will be using Decoval Heavy as my base 
stabilizer on the bottom. Now, I do not cut stabilizers out uh, with you in the cutting videos, but what you will do is you will just take all of the pieces that are labeled stabilizer and you will cut the stabilizer pieces out with that now the reason i don't cut stabilizers with you is because we're all going to use different stabilizers they all change from country to country um so i show you how you're cutting out all of the other pieces and you just cut the stablers stabilizers that you're using with the pieces as well anyways how about we get this all cleaned up thank you melissa for allowing me to make this tutorial and we are going to start with the exterior of the bag and i'm going to turn off that volume of my computer because you keep hearing the dings of my email anyways let me clear this off and then we will get started all right so let's get started so as we're going through the measurement cuts i will not be sharing what those measurements are so um just make sure you follow along in your cutting guide so you can have those measurements so i will just say what i'm cutting you will see my ruler but i will be trying to cover up the numbers best i can mainly because you have to own the pattern to know what those measurements are so um so we are going to be going off of page six as most of you know if you follow along um, my, with my other cutting videos i like to use the cutting guide in a pattern and then i like to use my um, air racing sew line pen to mark things off as i go because by the time like for an example you can see this isn't marked up at all that's because i used my sew line pen the last time i made this bag cross things off and then by the next time you go to sew with or to sew another one they have disappeared on their own so it's minimal work saves papers so you don't have to keep printing and you don't have to go through and erase it if you're like you're using a pencil so i'm going to kind of we're going to start with the first column with the exterior fabric and i am actually going to kind of jump around a little bit because i want to use up some of these scraps here so i'm going to pick and choose um, what we're cutting out there for these smaller scraps and then i'll pull out my full roll when we get to the bigger things so where is my pen there it is so what I like to do is I like to draw my pattern pieces on the backs of my vinyl before cutting. And the reason for that is to have minimal scraps. So say you had a roll of vinyl and it didn't quite like the way you cut it out. You didn't quite have enough vinyl for the whole bag. But if you had positioned things differently, you probably would have. So this is you can draw it on. You can kind of plan it out. And if you need to redraw some to um, make it so you have less waste, you can do that. So my client actually wants her straps to be um, 30 inches. So I have to cut them to 32 inches because I will be folding under an inch on each side now I don't believe I have any pieces that are big enough for that uh, for doing that so we will be doing the straps when I pull out my full roll so I'm gonna go ahead and move down to the strap connectors and I'm just gonna find my scrap piece I think I can get them out of this one which will be great and you're gonna go ahead and draw out your uh, two strap connectors or sorry four strap connectors so follow along with the measurement notes as to what those are and um, just draw them on the back so go ahead and do that while I do mine um, okay so just draw them on Oopsies. So this is two of them. So I drew them at double width. Now go ahead and once you got them drawn, so this is two, I'm also going to go ahead and do a center line. And that is for when we make the straps, um, for when we're folding it in and we don't have to go ahead and draw it later. So that's two of them. And I'm going to just have to kind of Move it up a little here. Again, a little bit easier when you're not using scraps, but I am using scraps. So, oh, 
my air conditioner just clicked on. That means it's going to be a hot one. Okay, there's my uh, last two. So one, two, three, four. And my center lines. And I just like to write con, con, con. So I know those are my strap connectors. And then I can go ahead and I can cross that off my list. Okay, so next we want to cut four zipper panels, which I think I'm going to be able to get out of this piece as well. I definitely am. Actually, maybe I can even go this way. No, I'm going to go this way. So go ahead and draw out four zipper panels as per the measurements in the pattern. Now you may choose, oh, never mind. Ignore what I just said. So these are for the exterior. So you're going to cut four. So I'm drawing out two at a time here, just because that's easy math for me to do in my head. And because I'm going to have to adjust, I just know that that is what is going to fit in this scrap piece that I'm doing. I am definitely a scrap buster, that's for sure. So I can cut this in half. Now these are super, super skinny zipper panels. So you will notice that. So there's two of my zip panels and I need two more exterior zip panels. I'm gonna have to, but yes, they are super skinny. So you're not doing it wrong. That is what they are. All right. But look at this, I'm using up all of my scrap. This is perfect. No waste. Okay. Oopsies, not quite. There we go. Zip and zip, just so I know what they are. And you can go across and go down the exterior and cross off those four. Exterior slip pockets, I'm going, so the exterior slip pockets, I am not going to be able to get out of my scrap pieces, so I will be doing that on my full roll, so we're going to skip over that. I'm going to go down to my a slip pocket trim, so this is for the inside of the, the bag, I think. Now you can decide, this is for the exterior of the bag. You can decide, because there are two compartments of this bag and we're gonna be doing them exactly the same. So in both of mine, I'm going to have a slip pocket and I am going to have a zipper pocket. Now you may choose to only have one of each or one a zipper pocket in one of the compartments and a slip pocket in the other or doubling it up. I'm gonna have one of each, so I'm gonna go ahead and draw out my, actually let's see if one of these is long enough slip pocket pieces. Again, I'm looking at my scraps to see, you know what, I will save that for something else. Um, so my slip pocket pieces, I cut a little bit different. Um, I'm going to cut mine and I'll give you these measurements because they are my measurements. So I do have a tutorial on how I do my slip pockets. Uh, so you can um, go back in classes and see that or you can look in my bag makers 101 playlist and I have it in there so I'm going to cut these I'm going to cut two of them at about nine ish inches by one and a half inches so there's one and I also like to draw a center line down the middle I'm going to slip pockets during the classes if you're watching this for classes um we do not do them in class i let you guys do your lining uh pockets the way you like to do them and then um you just uh go ahead and watch the tutorials for that so i need another one just like that again however you like to do them you can follow the pattern as well but these are the measurements i like to do my slip pocket uh accent 
kind of binding strips in a way, but it's not binding. So nine inches by one and a half inches ish. And again, I'm doing two in this bag, but you can customize it however you like. So I'm going to write slip and slip. Look at using up that scrap. That's awesome. So slip pocket trim, I'm going to cross that off because it's done. My exterior pieces, I'll do in my big roll. Um, exterior van. So now we're working into our pattern pieces. So we need a two of these exterior bands. And again, I'm going to utilize my scraps here. So I'm going to draw one out here and then I will find another home for the other one because this just fits super perfect here. So draw out one. So this is the pattern piece B, exterior band, and we want to do two of these. So just trace out your pattern piece. I'm going to label it B, exterior band. And then I'm going to find another piece where I can draw the second one. And right here works just fine for me. Now make sure if you're using a, um, a directional print that you have this pointing the right way. I'm not using one, so I can do it any way I like. band and I can cross that off of my list exterior band two done and again if you're doing cottons in this remember you will be um, backing them with your woven interfacings what next okay Lining top outer, aligning top inner. Let me just double check something because it has been a while since I made these. I think I have my head uh, lining top inner. Inner. So I am going to be doing those all in this vinyl. So, <laughs> so I am going to actually cut out these pieces right now, just because I'm pretty much done this piece. Now this one here, I'm actually going to be using cutting out two zipper pocket overlays as well. And uh, she does have a paper template for one. This is actually a Sew Yours uh, template for uh, cutting them out. So I will be using this and just using this to cut all the way around with this piece and this piece. I'm not going to do that on camera because not everybody has these overlays, but just trace out your pattern piece and do that. So I'm going to set these two pieces aside and I will be cutting those out off camera as well as I will be edge painting all the way around the raw edges of those. So I'm going to set that aside for now. Um, so that's the very last um, thing on the exterior cutter, exterior fabric cutting column is the two zipper overlays, but I'm just going to use my acrylic template to do that. And you guys can do it with the paper template or whatever shape that you like it to be um, on your own. So I'm going to set this aside for now and I will cut that later. Okay. Let's cut out these pieces and get this scrap piece out of the way because I have used out as much as I can. Now, if you are doing this on a brand new roll, just hold on and then uh, we can keep drawing here momentarily. I just want to clear this away or you can cut out your pieces like I am as well. Um, goes this way. I'm a rotary cutter girl, as you can see. I'm going to put these aside with the these pieces here. And throw that aside. Now 
most time consuming and cutting this bag out is the exterior. That's where the most pieces are. The linings go really fast. It's the exteriors that are more involved. Two pictures. Four connectors, we can set those aside. I love the nice straight edges. So easy to cut. Now my slip pocket pieces, I am also going to edge paint the two long sides. Again, that's optional. I like to edge paint and I like to have that nice finished look, but you definitely don't have to. It's not gonna fray or anything. I just like having a nice colored edge to my raw edges. Two slip pocket pieces. And my zipper pockets. Or zipper um watch my hands. Now I am going to why did I do a dotted line right there? I didn't have to do a dotted line. Well, I'll be cutting along there. Um, and these uh, zipper panels we're going to put aside and we're going to actually use these pieces when we go to cut out our lining. So then you don't have to bring the ruler out. You can just use these as your template and cut straight from one of them like a pattern piece. So I'm going to put these into the more to be cut pile. So remember to cut them out them over to this side okay so yeah that's all I have left of this one so I killed that pretty good which was good now let's go back in and see what else I can get out of this piece um, oh look it I can get my exterior bottom piece which is awesome so I think I will draw that one out here a slightly curved bottom don't be scared of that it's so very very slight on these corners so that's a C bottom so I can cross that off my list so the bottom and of course you will do your bottom stabilizer you will fuse it outside of the seam allowances using that pattern piece um, what else can I fit on this piece um, do you know what? I think that is all I'm going to. Yeah, I put these the rest of these scraps with my next project and I can use them for my slip pockets or my zipper pockets or what have you. I think I've used these scraps the best that they can be used, but I'm not going to throw away this little bit. I will use it. Vinyl's expensive. You want to make sure that you save stuff so you can use it later. You would not believe my, my scrap cubbies. They're, they're unbelievable. Okay, so yes, the bottom piece, you'll have to remember to put your stabilizer on it. Okay, set that aside for now. I'll put these in my scrap bin. And now we'll go back to the top of our list. So. I can oops what did I just knock down I think that was a ruler it was okay so I'm gonna go ahead and draw out my straps first um, now my client the pattern calls for 29 inch length straps you can make the straps any length you want. You can make them handbag straps if you wanted to, which is about 16-ish inches. You can make them shoulder bag, which is about 27 to 29 inches. Um, my client likes that hers, and I make them for her all the time, she likes them to be 30 
inches to go over her shoulder. So I cut mine to 32 inches because I do fold them under that one inch to rivet them on. So I want to make sure that the entirety of the strap is 30 inches after it's been folded over. So I'm going to go ahead and draw. So this is only a 24 inch ruler. So I'm doing four inches and I'm just going to do a little mark like so because I'm going to have to add 24, 5, 2, 6, 2, 7, 2, 8, 2, 9, 30, 3, 1, 30. I'm going to have to add 8 more inches here. So then I just move my ruler over, put my 8 inch mark on those little notches that I did where my ruler ended. And that'll equal 32. And then of course I do a 2 inch dotted line in the middle for when I go to make the straps. That work is already done for me, seeing as I have the ruler and the pen out already. It just makes sense to do it. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and do the exact same thing for my second strap. It's nice and straight. Draw that center line. that out exterior slip pockets so this one this bag has so many pockets so it's got the two compartments that are zipper pockets and then it's got I can't remember if there's one in between I can't remember I should really watch my tutorial I will do that <laughs> um, and then on my inside I'm gonna have slip pockets and zipper pockets on each of those but then on the back sides of these there are also slip pockets with the magnetic closure, so pockets galore. So we are now to one, two, three, four down on the exterior fabric, and you'll see the measurements there for doing your two exterior slip pockets. Again, I'm not going to share those measurements. Um, you'll just have to go ahead. I'm going to actually grab. No, I can use this ruler. So draw out two of them as per the pattern measure measurements which I will do now. Um, okay. So again, it's a little bit longer than what my ruler is. So I'm just going to do similar to like what I did with the straps. Okay. So that is one pocket. Make sure I got it right. Yeah. So this is one exterior slip. And you'll see below this, it'll have the a stabilizer measurement cut for these pockets as well. So you will want to follow that to cut stabilizer there. Here's my second one. A little easier to draw because I can use the other one is a guide. Oops, did I do that wrong? Okay. Exterior slip. So we got those two done. We can cross that off of our exterior list. Um, all right. Now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to draw these ones. Just trying to use up. I don't know if this is going to fit in here. Oh, do you know what it might? Okay. So now we're going to do our lining E tops. Now it says inner. Um, these are the ones where I'm going to have, this is going to be vinyl, and then there will be a zipper here. And then my bottom part is going to be my lining fabric. And that is just so above the zippers, we have just straight across vinyl. You can do whatever you like here. So it says to cut two lining, but I'm actually using my exterior fabric for these pieces. So I am going to cut two of these, or draw out oh, two of these. Oops. Again, if you're using directional fabric, make sure it's pointing the right way. Oopsies, I'm not very straight here, am I? I'm 
there's one. And I'm just gonna flip it because I wanna have a nice straight edge there to work with later. For drawing anything else out. Now, let's cross that off of our list. Lining top inners, where are we? Lining top inner two. Now, when we get to the zipper tab section, I am not cutting those because I'm gonna use metal zipper tabs. So if you're using zipper tabs, vinyl zipper tabs, go ahead and cut those out. Uh, now I'm gonna move to my exterior piece. So. Lay this down so I have the least amount of waste possible. Okay. And we'll have to draw out two of these a little bit more. There's a lot of pieces to cut up, but this bag goes together magically. It is amazing. So one thing, Melissa is a very, very, very talented pattern designer. I must give her that. And she's a good friend too. So this is the main section of your bag. Okay, so that's one. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the other one right above it. I'll move it over here. The one I did in the tutorial, I did in Galaxy Custom Pearl Vinyls, and it was so pretty. I did it in like the Lagoon Teal, I believe it was. So a exterior, a exterior. Okay, so we can cross that off of our list. We're almost done with this. I've done my overlays while I'll do them later. So now we just have two of our lining top outers. Where's that pattern piece? There it is. I'm kind of hoping. I'm going to lay it right here. And then I'll just have this little piece of scrap, which is good. So here's one. Okay, I'm going to cut a second one just above it. I think I made good use of my vinyl. I got some good leftovers for a working vinyl for the next project, which was my goal. So I think I've mapped these pieces out pretty good. Sorry if you're seeing the top of my head. Probably seeing my roots. Okay, so this is D, D, lining outer lining outer 
You know, she does her lining top lining and there's all in the exterior fabric too. So that worked good. So that is done. So I can see I've done everything. I still have to cut out my zipper overlays, but I will do that off camera. But I've done all of that exterior. So now we can go ahead and cut the rest of these out. there but it'll be fine it's one exterior So and again, when you go to interface this, you would cut the interfacing and you would fuse it on outside of the seam allowances. So and that'll be homework to do before moving on to the next parts. scared me he's underneath my desk <laughs> so there is no crossbody strap for this one okay there's my two straps so I just like holding my pattern pieces together with these alligator clip hair clips You can hear I need to change my rotary cutter. It kind of makes this clicking sound. I think I need a new rotary cutter. This one is so incredibly old. Well loved. Okay, there's my two exterior slip pockets. Those will need interfacing as well. Just cut these away here. And I've got this big piece to use which will be long enough for a crossbody strap too for another project. So that'll go in my scrap bin. pieces almost there I'm going to go off camera. I'm going to cut out those zipper overlays and then we will I'll get this cleaned up and we'll come back and we will do the lining pieces. Okay, so now we are moving on to the lining piece. This is where I'm a little nervous because I'm really hoping I have enough of this. 
So we're on column two of the cutting guide and I am going to actually start first because it's very important that this is our uh, main panel. So we're going to need four lining bottom panels and that's what I'm hoping I'm going to get out of here. Now the way our lining bottom panels are, you will see they are a box bottom. So we luckily we do not need to, I have more than enough, um, we do not need to um, cut a bottom piece for this. So my fabric really isn't that directional. So I'm going to cut two of these at a time. I'm going to fold it up on itself. Actually, I think I can cut four at a time. Uh, yeah, I have more than enough fabric. Sweet. I can move this up a little bit more. So linings I find I cut are so fast because you can fold the fabrics and you can make multiple layers. You can cut more than one at a time. So this is two layers, so that'll be two. And right about there, if I fold this again in half here, you'll see we've got two folds. So that'll be one, two, three, four. That'll be cutting all four at the exact same time. Take my pattern piece, lay it down. I'm gonna use the pattern weights to hold this for me. And if you see this, you'll see why I didn't go into pottery. This was a yarn bowl I did in a pottery class once upon a time. Oh my gosh, it's terrible, but it's super cute. It's supposed to be a sheep. I don't know if you guys can see the sheep there. All right, so I'm gonna just go in and I'm gonna cut through all four layers. Again, if this is directional, you might not wanna do it this way because you may have some upside down pieces. This is where you can see I should have changed my rotary cutter blade. This is my third project on this rotary cutter blade. I try to only do two, but I forgot to change it. So I think I say that every single cutting video it still works. So again, I will back these with EB Fuse Light, which is like an SF 101. So medium woven and interfacing. But look how fast that is to cut out all four at the same time, even with the doll rotary blade. Really doll rotary blade. Oh my gosh, Brandy. Okay. So if I did the math right and fold it up properly, we should have four. So one. One, two, three, and four. So those these will go in the 2B interface bucket. And those are all cut out. Yay. And this will be something else out of my scrap bin. Yay. It's only been in there for many, many years. So lining bottoms four, done. And I will do the interfacing separate, of course. Next important thing to be done is um, the zipper panels. So that's where I kept my zipper panels out. We want to cut four of these in the lining. So let's see here. I think I can use some of these pieces here. Again, trying to use the most of the fabric as I can. How about here? Nope, not quite. Along here. Okay, so I can cut one here. And again, I'm just using my one I cut out of the vinyl as my template now. And again, I'm just trying to use as much as this fabric as I can. So if you weren't using scraps like me, you could definitely make four layers of fabric again and cut all four at the same time. But I'm hopeful I'll have enough for the majority of my pockets linings. So I'm being conservative. So there's one. I think I can get another one along this skinny piece. Oh yeah, I can. 
I find it very satisfying, <laughs> if you can't tell, when I can use up as almost every single square inch of fabric. It makes me so happy. There's two. Where else do I have? Right here. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. You guys must think I'm nuts. So these will need to be interfaced as well. You could also be using your ruler as your template if you wanted to, just follow the measurements. Easier for me to use this because I can't share the measurements with you. That's three. Where else can I get a nice long skinny piece? Right here. And four. And I'm probably going to have enough for my exterior slip pockets, which was my goal. And then I'll do everything else in the black fabric. Okay, and of course these, again, I said it already, I believe, that you will interface these unless you're using like a waterproof canvas. So one, two, three, four. I'm back with these ones and the cotton pieces will be interfaced. All right, so let's cross off. We're almost there. Um, zipper panels, we've done those. Okay. So I'm going to grab, just bear with me while I go and grab my slip pocket pieces. I'm hoping I have enough to get the linings for my two exterior slip pockets, which I'm sure I can out of this, because you can see, look how well we've done. Once again, oh, I got sticky tape there. Let's wipe that off. I'm just gonna lay it down. Oh yeah, I got more than enough. And then the rest of this I'll probably, hmm, unless I got enough for my pockets, we will see. So here's one, and I'm just using my pattern, my exterior slip pocket piece as my template. Look at the mess I'm making, hey? That's one. Get my second one right here. Sweet. I'm very happy that I was able to use scraps. Very, very happy. So as you can see, for the number of pieces, the majority of the action will be happening on the exterior of the bag. The linings are pretty simple. So those pieces will be interfaced as well. Put those aside. So that is two exterior slip pockets. So now all we have are our, yeah, I think I'm gonna check the rest of this. There's not very much left. And for our slip pockets, I'm gonna do them in black. The black slip pocket will actually accent um, the black in this pretty nicely. And this is all I have for waste, just little itty bitty pieces. So I'm just gonna chuck this. One less thing in my pile. And then I'm gonna grab my black fabric and we will cut out the rest. So aligning zipper pockets. These I can give measurements on because they're just standard measurements for lining zipper and slip pockets. So again, I am going to be doing two lining zipper pockets and two lining slip pockets. You can decide how many you want to do. So, which side do I want to do this on? Do it on this side. As you can see, I cut into this all the time. I always have black just for this exact reason. 
Okay, so for my two zipper pockets, I'm gonna do this on the fold. So this is for my zipper pocket lining pieces. Got this on the fold. I want it to be at least six-ish inches high from the fold down. Mine's a little bit bigger. And we want to cut them to about, I always do mine to six by 10 inches. I do two of them like that. So I got my salvage here. So I got it over a little bit. And I have it just up a little bit because I am gonna be cutting along there as well um, to make this into two pieces. So do four pieces that are approximately, approximately 10 by six inches. And I'm gonna just cut the salvage off. So they're slightly different than the measurements in the pattern. They're just my preference. I always do mine just that little bit longer. I'm gonna do the same on this side, 10 by six ish inches. So this will be for my two zipper pockets, lining zipper pockets. And I should have four of them now. One, two three, four. So these will be interfaced as well with a woven interfacing. And then I am also going to do two aligning slip pockets and we want them to be, we're going to do them on the fold because we want them to be 12 inches high. Sometimes you can take your phone and kind of guesstimate if that's going to be enough. And it usually is because you like your phone just to stick out just a little bit. So what you do in here. So I'm gonna cut off this excess here. We have it on the fold. So I got my six inch ruler here. So on the fold, I just put it along there and I'm not gonna cut that fold because then this is gonna make it a 12 inch piece, which is what we want. And we want it to be nine inches by 12 inches. And I am gonna cut two of these because I'm doing two slip pockets. So nine inches by 12 inches. So it looks something like this because we will be folding it up in, in half. And one more the same way. And then you'll interface those. through the list that's done so all we have left to do now is cut out the woven interfacings and the stabilizers all right that's it that's all i really do hope you enjoyed this cutting video again the cutting videos are new to the channel um I did have great requests for them, so I figured when I can get one done, when I'm cutting one out, I should put it on the channel for you guys to see. And if you have any questions, you can always leave them in comments or shoot me a message. So I hope this was helpful. Please do let me know if this was helpful or not down in the comments. I so appreciate you. You're the only way I can help grow my channel and to know what kind of content you want to see on it. So if you did like this tutorial, please do give me a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please do subscribe. If you'd like to support me further, you can always buy me a coffee. That's linked down below in the description. And again, this is our July 2023 live sew along class on the membership side. Um, of course, there will be replays after July 2023 that the memberships all have access to as well. So check out that side in case there's something there that interests you. And otherwise, I will catch you guys on the next one. Bye.